So ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to Who's Your Leader? We are one voice, one people. And we uh, call the members of press so that we can articulate our concerns and the challenges that we are facing as an industry. So welcome officially. Allow me to start by introducing myself. My name is DNG. I'm an award-winning entertainer, multimedia personality. I'm the founder of Who's Your Leader? And I am also a committee member of One Voice, One People. And I'll be your host for this auspicious occasion. So now I would like to start by introducing my committee members. So allow me to begin by introducing the chair, Madam Noni Mwangi. You'll be hearing from her later. Mm -hmm. Also with us are other committee members. So we have Mr. Frank Ware, who is uh, a DJ and an entrepreneur. I forgot to mention that Noni is a hospitality industry expert and consultant. And we also have with us Francis Gaido, who's an expert in the sports arena. So stakeholders, friends, partners, well wishes, members of the general public, Members of the Fourth Estate, thank you so much for coming today. We appreciate your presence and we're gathered here to shed more light on what we are facing as what we're calling a national agenda. Now, first and foremost, we'd like to highlight and underscore the Kenya government's action of unfair and inconsiderate closure of the country and the dire repercussions and consequences that are being felt across the Republic by ordinary Kenyans who've been rendered jobless as a result of the lockdown. These Kenyans are now unable to work are now unable to earn and put food on the table. And majority of Kenyans do not have the luxury of mega savings and what we call trust funds that can cushion them during this pandemic and during this lockdown. Furthermore, there has been no economic relief by the government and there has been no psychosocial support. The misguided and ill-thought closure of the hospitality, entertainment, events, sports and creative industries have left our members distraught. And if, uh, we'd like to just state that it is now impossible to remain operational under these circumstances. Other industries that have been affected include transport and education as well that are feeling this pain. And our plight, the challenges we're facing are being felt across the nation, directly and indirectly. And as a result of this sudden closure, businesses have been shut down. Payments have been withheld. Employees have been sent home with immediate unpaid leave. Many citizens are now unable to pay their bills. What we're seeing is that some are now battling eviction, foreclosure, auctioning, suicide, and even depression. Mental health challenges have spiraled out of control. Many breadwinners are now unable to meet medical bills and recurrent obligations and expenses as they engage in the caregiving of their dependents and loved ones. We have a disaster on our hands. Intervention is critical and must be done now. All we want is for the president to unlock our country so that we can get out, go out, get back to work, begin to earn again and be able to feed our families. And before I invite our dear chair to just say a few remarks and read out our joint press statement, I'd like you to tell, I'd like to tell you a story. This is a short story about our president. Now, our dear President, His Excellency Urumigai Kenyatta, unilaterally decided that the best thing to do was to lock down this country. And everyone is entitled to an opinion, though not every opinion is a meaningful contribution to a problem. What the President Uhuru forgot, overlooked and disregarded, is how the lockdown has adversely affected Kenyans. Freedom of movement is not simply about being able to go hang out in the mall or to lie around on Givenchy Gardens. Freedom of movement has to do with the ability to earn freely. It has to do with a friendly environment for businesses to operate freely. Now, when lockdown is imposed, it automatically makes business players shift into crisis mode. During a crisis, budgets are withheld. People stop spending, and the spillover effect of holding cash brings about a liquidity crisis. Money has ceased to flow everywhere in every industry all over this nation. Employers have stopped paying employees. Employees have been sent home. Now they're unable to pay their rent. So ultimately, landlords too are broke. Landlords cannot service bank loans. Banks have decided to foreclose and auction assets. And without money to pay for lawyers, landlords cannot get injunctions in court. Wait a minute. Does the executive follow court orders anymore? The Mamamboga now has no one to sell to. Customers have disappeared. Stock is going bad. The Mamamboga has thrown it away and has packed up her bags. She cannot go back to her rural area because the city is on lockdown. Her kids are now hungry. She cannot pay for school fees. Wait, schools are closed. She's now stranded. 
What does she do? We have a businessman, and a businessman is now cash strapped. No one is taking up his services anymore. Clients who owe him money are now saying to onge after lockdown. So swali ni, bwana rais, lockdown itaishalini, inchi itafunguliwa lini. Only the president knows. Now we are seeing that this same businessman has a family member who is now in hospital, who has been hospitalized with COVID-19. The bills are rising. The bill is now at 1 million Kenya shillings. The insurance provider sent an email stating that they do not cover COVID-19 complications. And therefore, despite him having paid the premium, unfortunately, the insurance company cannot cover this cost. They claim it is outside the policy and he has no money to pay the hospital. He has exhausted all his savings. He, has, he had planned his life very well. Unfortunately, everything is going to disarray. The hospital is piling pressure. They want a top up and they, they need a guarantor. They will not allow his spine to be discharged and to go back home to self-isolate. So they cannot release the patient from hospital. They also threaten him to get the patient off oxygen. And this fellow Kenyans is what is happening on ground. This fellow Kenyans is the dire reality and the dire consequences of a misguided decision to lock down our country. And this is why we want the president, Uhuru Migai Kenyatta, to unlock our country. So at this juncture, allow me to just call upon and invite our dear chair, Noni Mwangi, to read our joint press statement. Sante. Thank you, DNG. Uh, before I read this joint statement, I'd like to clarify that whatever we are advocating for affects everybody in every industry. And that is why when we say unlock our country, we don't say unlock hospitality or unlock entertainment. We're in the capital. Everything that is happening now, we've locked down the capital city. We've locked down the capital's major source of income generation, which is hospitality and entertainment. Thank you. Now, this effect that DNG has already um, indicated, the ripple effect of this lockdown, is what we are feeling now. And what I want to say before I read this statement is to my fellow Kenyans, because we are the ones who are suffering together, this will affect you. You think it doesn't affect you now, but it's already, um, the other industries have started feeling it. Banks have started putting staff uh, on, a, on a lowered uh, lowered staff members. We have organizations working from home, minimizing their staff by 50%, then going to 70%. Supermarkets have already indicated drops in sales because we have no money to shop. The liquor stores, which you say were the ones maybe doing mega business when we're on lockdown, are also stuck, shutting down, closing down. You try alternative businesses, we close down. Another thing I want to say is it is important not to mock our industry and tell us to find other things to do. We studied, we have experience, we know what we are doing, and we are good at it. We don't want handouts from the government, we want to go back to work immediately. So I will read this statement. It's a declaration by a tired and dangerously angry Kenyan citizenry. We, the citizens of Kenya, under the banner of the hashtag Unlock Our Country, hereby submit this list of demands in recognition of the fact that the effect of the lockdown on the economy is worse than the effect of the spread of the virus. More importantly, the recovery rate from COVID infection is higher than recovery from financial deprivation and cessation of economic activities. More destruction and death during the last one year have been caused by police extrajudicial killings, starvation, suicide, road accidents than the COVID virus itself. It has been a traumatizing period for Kenyans due to the misguided lockdowns initiated by the presidency. As the rest of Kenyans complied, politicians hosted super spreader events and escalated an already bad situation. Vaccines which arrived in Kenya from the COVAX facility meant to be administered free are being hoarded and in many cases sold by rogue hospitals and Ministry of Health officials. In this regard, we hereby demand, one, the immediate and unconditional reopening of the country from the misguided lockdown imposed last week on Friday. Two, the removal of the National Police Service officers from actively enforcing the curfew and disrupting transport, education, universities, colleges, ETC. 
business activities, including harassing and extortion of small and medium-sized enterprises in various towns across the country. Three, the resumption of normal transport services, that's road, rail and air, enabling movement of people and goods. Four, the urgent and concerted effort of all health sector players to initiate a concerted effort to inoculate all Kenyans with the free COVID vaccine, beginning with the operators in the entertainment, hospitality, sports, education, and transport sectors who are widely exposed due to the nature of their work. Five, the upholding of constitutional provisions under Article 37 of Kenya's 2010 Constitution, which says that every person has the right peaceably and unarmed to assemble, to demonstrate, to picket, and to present petitions to public authorities. Six, the urgent review of fuel and electricity prices and cancellation of independent power producers, those are IPP's contracts, who are behind the outrageously high consumer electricity prices that have adversely influenced Kenya's SMEs, leading to closure of entertainment outlets, hotels, restaurants, barbershop salons, cyber cafes, DVD stalls, fast food restaurants, and so on. Seven, the immediate disbursements of funds meant to cushion the most vulnerable in society, including the youth funds, which we recently learned from the Auditor General, were redistributed to recurrent expenditure. Eight, the commencement of economic recovery rescue stimulus packages, including reduction of VAT on basic commodities, interest relief from bank loans, and regulation of digital lenders. Nine, the end of the daily press briefings by the Ministry of Health and Media to instead reprioritize job creation, return to normalcy, and economic incentives by the government. Ten, the immediate subsidy on food and basic commodities, school fees and hospital bills for all Kenyans in both public and private schools and hospitals using the funds advanced to the country by multilateral donors and foreign nations. We join hands with Kenyans of goodwill who have been engaging in peaceful protests across the country and implore upon the others to join hands with their comrades to help agitate for our rights as citizens of Kenya. Protests from any part of the country. We ask the international community, donor agencies and foreign media to highlight continued exploitation of Kenyans by infringing on our democratic rights and freedom to assemble and picket. Kenya should not continue qualifying for the massive donor kitty if it continues to be managed like a failed state, which doesn't meet disbursement criteria as stipulated by donors. We urge foreign embassies and missions to impose a travel ban and economic blockade on assets and cash reserves of top government officials and their families banked in their countries who issue orders for the police to deny Kenyans the constitutional right to freely assemble and present memorandum. This is written by the people. Thank you. All right, so at, at this juncture, ladies and gentlemen, we're now open to questions uh, from members of the federal state. And then we'll also be back here. respond to those queries. So if you have any questions or anything you'd like clarified, please ask and we'll be able to to respond to that. Yes, please. Uh, initially, it started off as a group of entertainers, but then we realized that uh, there are more people affected, especially in other uh, industries like sports. Uh, so we just decided to come together, all of us, uh, to, to make our voices heard so that uh, we can just energize the movement and, uh, and, make, it, and make it stronger. Yeah. If I can add on to that, um, we have included, or a lot of different parties have reached out to us, so when we stand here, we, like Francis said, we represent hospitality, which now trickles down into entertainment, DJs, MCs, events. However, we have tourism affected, we have um, hotel accommodation affected, we have long distance travel, like uh, country bus transport, completely shut down. We have buses lying in parking lots, people who are stranded in the city, they can't travel back. 
So when we started this, yes, we were trying to communicate the fact that we are suffering in hospitality. However, other people reached out and said because hospitality was unfairly brought to a crashing halt, we are suffering too. So the struggle sort of just spread out to the other industries, but we have been directly affected. So that's why our voice is the loudest. Uh, okay, I'll answer that. Well, yes, we did have a different location. Unfortunately, we were accosted by the police and we were, of course, kindly requested to leave and we asked why. And we said we don't have, we were informed we don't have a permit. And we wondered if you need a permit to hold a press conference. And the, in fact, the levels of authorization that were required, you would think it was a whole different thing. And I think the misinformation that went out to our forces is that we were having a meeting, and it was not a meeting. It was a simple press conference to communicate to the president of Kenya that we are suffering on the ground. Our people are dying, okay? Our people are hungry, their children are sick, they are homeless. We are keeping people in our living rooms because they have nowhere else to go. They can't travel out of Nairobi to their shags, as we call it. So we are stuck. So based on that, I cannot really say why we were evicted from that premise. But the point of this was not to be aggressive. The point was to communicate what we are communicating, which is to unlock the country and abolish curfew immediately. And I, I think uh, this, this entire pandemic period, ever since the first lockdown in March, we have noticed what we call a selective uh, very kind of like interpretation of the presidential guidelines by the police service. Uh, what is said and what is implemented are totally different from day one. For instance, uh, the, the last lockdown uh, speech by the president, he said that persons 50 and below will not be allowed to congregate. We were only less than 15 in that particular venue. So we don't understand why the police were being aggressive. I understand they were from Parkland's police station uh, dispatch. We, are, we don't understand where this, this aggression is coming from. We don't understand how Kenya has slid to where it is currently, that we cannot be able to, uh, to, to congregate and air our views to the media, yet the media have been allowed and have been given special access as, a, as, as a, what, what do you call them? Essential, Essential, services. Essential services. So we don't know where there is all this selective interpretation of these uh, rules uh, and, and, and they started, you know, last year when they were enforcing the lockdown, then they started fighting people, then they started killing people. And we were wondering, are you fighting the people or are you fighting the virus? Uh, and, and, and that's where we are stuck. And uh, right now we are closed up. We cannot fend for ourselves all because of fighting a virus. And I think right now the adverse effects of the lockdown are, are more severe and are killing more people than the virus. Maybe I can add something to that before the next question, if I may. So it's also for us to articulate and uh, just make sure we emphasize that there's the freedom of, of, uh, of uh, expression that, we, that cannot be taken away. And what that means is that we have the right to articulate ourselves, we have the right to express ourselves. As he's rightfully said, the reason we have called this press conference is because of the pain that we are facing. Not only the four of us, but all the industries that are represented here, and even those that have joined our cause across this economic uh, sector. So it's not just about artists, it's not about the ENG, it's not about Noni or the, the Francis and Frank. It's about the entire economy. The economy is on its knees. Now we know that the government does not want that message out there, but we're not going to relent. We're not going to stop articulating ourselves and expressing ourselves as we know uh, fit. So what we're saying is that we must be able to agitate, we must say no to draconian laws, we must say no to a military state where uh, four of us cannot convene to talk to media without the, the, the state agencies coming with walkie-talkies and, 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 guns. Uh, and guns and a dog. There was even a, yeah. an Alsatian. You know, how is it possible that politicians have 
free way to hold magnanimous rallies across this country, but we cannot have a press statement. I think this is a way of the government trying to, to shun and trying to, to stifle uh, expression and, and freedom of expression for that matter, and we are not going to relent. The fact that this hashtag and local country was able to hit, I think, 51,000 tweets in two, two days, two days yeah. yes. that shows that Kenyans are angry. It's not just about us. It's Kenyans who have nothing to eat. So, you know, we have Kenyans who are, who are going hungry. We have Kenyans who are struggling. Yet the government is still saying that, you know what, we are going to lock down this country so that we can stop COVID-19. As if the virus has been informed that it cannot transverse the country from 8 p.m. to 4 a.m. As if the virus has been given a brief that uh, it cannot cross the border of Nairobi and Kajiado and Machakos and Kiambu and Nakuru. Those, that is what we're calling misguided and illogical conversations and illogical ways of dealing with the virus. So I think it's shame on the government. Shame on the government for coming up with solutions and ideas that do not make sense. We are tired, we are frustrated, we are hungry, and we want to go back to work. So urgently unlock our country. question and, and, and maybe Frank can yeah. speak to that because it's also a DJ maybe <laughs> thank you yeah so so maybe just to start off with um, maybe your, your, your last question eh? so it's so it's so it's about the trickle-down effect okay so to be honest with you so I'm in entertainment uh, I, I basically do events and for us and largely everybody within the industry are struggling to understand there was a hundred million shillings that are allocated um, to us that money has actually gone to very few people. We are not seeing that money anywhere. So we have guys, and I'll talk about the DJs more specifically. So us, we basically rely on either clubs or events that we do. So when you lock down the country, what that means then is that these people have to basically go at home. And you notice, right, I mean, if you look at the DJ industry in the last probably, what, 10, 15 years, it has become a career for, for actually most of us. It means that we have no other jobs that we do. We depend on that money coming from playing and entertaining uh, revelers that we can be able to pay our school fees, we can be able to pay for our rents, be able to basically put food on the table. That has been taken away. And our, our problem is that we are not seeing any other solution given to us by the government. When they tell us to go and sit down in the houses because there's a lockdown indefinitely. So how long? What conversation are we having with our, with our, with our landlords? So we are absolutely confused. Terrified, yes. We look, guys are going through depression. People are losing homes. People are losing jobs. So it's, it's a really, really mess for, for guys in the industry. Yeah. Um, I'll address your question on the effect maybe on our industry. There are about 14,000 bars in Nairobi that have directly been affected by this. If I just say bars alone, this data I have from the Bar Association here. Now, our industry employs or gives an income to about 2.5 million people. So right now, 2.5 million people have been directly affected. Leave the ripple effect. 2.5 million people are out of work, all right? And you must understand, we are the people fighting for an industry where the owners of the industry are not present. It's important that I highlight this, all right? I'm an employee, for example. I would expect my, the directors or the owners of the club I work in or the restaurant I work with to be the ones driving this agenda, but we don't. So we are fighting the fight they should fight so we can get our jobs. You must understand how alone we feel right now. Uh, the effect is so bad we have about 30% of Outlets that have closed. I sit in uh, a group with bar owners at, from a different association, and they are constantly selling their items. They're constantly subletting their spaces and eventually have closed. 
So the person who will survive is the person who has alternative businesses. But like Frank has said, we don't have alternative businesses. We've invested in this career. We've invested in, and we've put a lot of time in it. This is our source of income. This is how we feed our families. So when we ask again the government and the president, how are we supposed to feed our families? The address, this is your first question, that was made by the president last week. I, I can't really say I heard it all, but a clip was sent to me that disappointed me deeply when the president said that he was advised wrongly. I cannot remove myself from the responsibility of my people because someone gave me wrong advice. The buck ends with me. If I'm the president, the buck ends with me. So by the time you tell me shut it down, five counties, Watakuasawa, are you sure? Who else can I listen to? Because if industry experts are misguiding the president, then I think we need to know what the agenda is for these lockdowns. Because for sure, it is not to prevent COVID. And you can tell based on how the armed forces, the police are handling people who are out of their houses at five past eight, 10 past nine. Guys cannot get home. Matatus are overloading the seats and the aisle because I will beg that driver to take me home because I know outside my house there are cops waiting to whip us into submission for COVID. And the Ministry of Health has communicated over and over how COVID is spread. I don't know why we are not reading. Me standing here doing nothing without a mask will not affect anybody over here. When I'm walking on the street, there's no effect. When you beat me up like I'm a criminal because I tried to get 200 shillings between 6 p.m. and 7 so I can buy food for my children who are at home by themselves because I can't afford help, and you beat me up as if I robbed a bank, I think we have a problem and misguided priorities in this country. And that is why we are here. I hope I have addressed your questions, my dear. I'd like to speak on to something very profound that I know young people across this republic are going to understand and relate to. The fact that there are no jobs, even before COVID-19, there were no jobs. Yes. Youth unemployment is at an all-time high. We have a government that does nothing, absolutely nothing about youth employment. She talked about the youth fund and the lack of funds going to the youth. Yet we have institutions, we have an entire ministry and an entire state department that has been charged with the responsibility of ensuring the welfare of young people has been looked into, but it's not doing its job. That is a problem. So we have young people who have degrees, diplomas, uh, certificates, young people who have masters who do not have jobs. It's impossible to get a job in this country unless you know somebody, unless that person is your father's friend or you know, your mother's connect. It's absolutely impossible. Even to get an industrial attachment for you to go out there and, and graduate for three months, you cannot get a placement as an intern, unpaid or paid, without a connection. Somebody somewhere saying, yeah, watch we are kuja three months, uh, hang out up So So what we've done is taken the initiative on ourselves, be it in sports, be it in, in hospitality, as a barrister, as a waiter, as a, as, a, as a DJ, as an artist, as a bouncer, you know, as, a, as somebody who helps people to park their cars, as a cowish guy outside the bar, to earn a living. Because we do not want to get into crime. We do not want to get into Ill, you know, illegal sources of income, like we know has been happening in this country. We're not those kind of people. We're legitimate business people, hustlers, people who are looking for chums day in, day out. And what they're saying is that if we do not go out there to work, we do not earn, and therefore we do not eat. It's as simple as that. And we're talking to a president who you know, has been quoted for not knowing the price of bread. Your Excellency, we are not those people who live in great houses and have um, inheritance from fathers and grandfathers. We are not. We are simpletons. We are ordinary Kenyans. Who, and we're not asking for handouts. Yes. We just want to work. So unlock our country. A question here. In terms of numbers, you've talked of 2.5 million Kenyans who directly or indirectly uh, depend on hospitality or decreases. Is that within the five counties or not? No, that's Nairobi. Yes, that's Nairobi. Nairobi. Not even Machakos, just Nairobi. And, and data that is financial shows that uh, the entertainment industry alone, entertainment, is a 5 billion Kenya shilling annual industry. So we've had a lockdown from, say, March 2020 to about uh, 
you know, right now, so April 2021. So that's five billion full year, full year that has gone. You understand? And that five billion is distributed among so many people, as they've, they've mentioned, like with Nairobi alone with 2.5 million people. What about the rest of the country? No, there's a bouncer in, in Narok. There's a, there's a waiter or a waitress in Kisi. You understand? There's a guy who washes cars outside uh, Diani, outside a bus. Guys walk, uh, drive in, you know, somebody's washing your car. Where there's a bar, there's a barber shop. There's a guy for tinting. Yeah, there's a guy for, for, for Mziki mm -hmm. who are wiring your hair wire, your mandai. You understand? It's an ecosystem, as he said. So that's how, that's why we're saying that the government needs to rethink and look at reopening this country because of that. It's not that we just want to be free to walk around at night. Nobody cares. You know, all we want to do is work. We're not asking to be free so that we hang out. Yeah. Because kama si kupanya kazi watu watatawapi riziki. Na bila riziki itakuwa ni wizi. Itakuwa ni, ni madawa. Itakuwa ni watu wanajiua. Tayari tumeona. Wengi. The numbers are there. And also <coughs> uh, representing sports. I'm very concerned by the deafening silence. Uh, coming from the sporting authorities, that means the federations, that means the ministry, ministry itself. Uh, we saw the double standards applied by the president, whereby stadiums are closed for sporting activities or for fans, but then they are open for funerals of top politicians. I think we saw that in Kisi. Uh, we are, we are, we are, I am personally concerned by the deafening silence of sporting authorities, federation presidents uh, in football, in athletics, in rugby. And I'm speaking right now to the stakeholders of the sporting industry. It is time you start getting rid of these people who cannot articulate your issues. They cannot even uh, share the, the monies they've been getting for stimulus packages during the COVID period. I know there is money which came from FIFA, which was very... Uh, very small. It was like a drop in the ocean for footballers. I know all these other federations have been engaging the Ministry of Sports uh, for stimulus packages and for, you know, uh, money to cushion the, the players, but that money is not getting to them. So the sporting fraternity, we are concerned by your silence. You should be waking up and speaking up and tweeting right now because this is a matter of life and death. You have spent the last one year out of meaningful sporting activity and now we are going into another one. Everyone is losing job, including the journalists, including everyone who covers football. And it is time now, even the sporting activity, the sporting fraternity to join us, to join this movement because enough is enough right now. So I think if, if, if we can all remember last year when we started the lockdown, um, so there was a lot of frenzy around online entertainment. So everybody was out there, so from artists to DJs, you know, uh, on Facebook and so on and so forth. And for a period, period of time, I mean, it was the in thing and people actually had something to do while you were at home. A year has passed and you notice we're not in the same place that we were a year ago. So the amount of money, disposable income has completely shrunk. It's, it's actually, it's not even existent. It's not there anymore. So asking somebody, you know what, you need to go ahead and buy data so I can come at home and entertain you. Obviously, this person doesn't have food on the table. So it becomes absolutely irrelevant. We have seen a complete shift. Those who have been trying to go online to entertain, the audience has completely shrunk. It's, it's non-existent anymore. And guys even asking themselves, wh where do I get that money to even go, go and buy that data? that are to be able to stream some of these things. So to be honest with you, I think um, times have changed. That's a reality. What we need to do, you have these guys, the DJs, the artists, the MCs, going back and working for a bread. That is what you're asking for. Online is not working, and it won't work. Thank you. I'd like to just make a comment regarding our industry. And I, what Frank is saying, of course, is it's the truth on the ground. And you can tell because immediately the DJs uh, would have started with online events, there is none. In fact, when people see it, they get irritated. Because last year, when the lockdown started, it was almost, we weren't sure what was gonna happen. So it's almost like we've gotten a few weeks off. So it was a lot, there was money from savings, you know. There was a little bit of money, so you could assemble with four or five friends, and you guys can have a fantastic evening or afternoon with, 
a DJ performing online, but it's not possible now. You will see there's nobody who has even initiated something like that. Now, we as an industry refuse to take the blame for the spike in the numbers. We refuse to be the scapegoat every single time some numbers are spiked up. We refuse to be the scapegoat. We refuse to be treated like fools where one day we are at an infection rate of 47% and suddenly the next day, five days later, it's 16%. I just urge us to monitor. We've been getting statistics every single day since last year. Monitor the numbers versus the activities that were happening. And you will see this whole mess started when we had a lot of public rallies going on. And you would, you would ask questions like the people in these rallies, where are they? You know, are they all affected? Have we had a massive infection rate of um, infection, say, in Kibera, in Kayole, in Kangemi? Have we? You know, we need to ask ourselves these questions. If I feel sick, can I go and get tested in Kenyatta Hospital, which is a public hospital? No, I can't. So I still have to have money for a test. So I, instead, I just try and survive, wash some clothes somewhere, clean a house, just to get a little money to feed my family. So we refuse to take the blame as an industry. It is not our fault. So when people keep telling us, Nini watu wa ba, Nini watu wa bank, man, you know, we refuse it. We followed the guidelines from the Ministry of Health. We did everything they wanted. We put the washing stations, we put the sanitizer, we distanced our tables, we minimized them to two, two, two seats per person. I mean, when you look at a, a, a cafe like Art Cafe, which has from 16 employees down to two per branch, I don't know if we understand, that's 87% jobless. I don't know if this is something Kenyans are understanding, that 14 people per branch are out of work. I don't know if, if this is serious or not. So when people say, you know, you guys, your industry, it's you guys, I get very worked up because what you don't understand is you need us for your business to thrive. Uber, taxis, matatus, everything. It's all around this industry. And that's why we will not back down until the country is open and curfew is abolished. What's back and chill? <laughs> what is back and chill? Come <laughs> out at the DJ plays uh, the song and you just buy to eat. But I saw, I saw, I saw her complaining that she's also been yeah. shut down. Has the one in Garden Estate been shut down too? Or you, you wanted us to comment about the, the concept. Yeah. The concept of Is parking your vehicles, concept? I, uh, you know, do you, in an so yes, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Go. So, thank you. So, guys, as as an event organizer, event manager, event planner, what I've been doing for the last maybe 13, 14 years. Sorry, uh, every single idea that young people are coming uh, concept to conceptualize and to put together is being disrupted by the government. Mm. Every single idea. Yeah. The last time, somebody has, has, had asked a question about online earning, right? And did you know that now there's supposed to be tax yeah. on online revenue? Mm. Like every single idea, I repeat again and underscore Taxing and reiterate, Airbnb. Yeah, that every, everything you, we come together and, and do as young people, the government wants to block that. The government wants to block that. Even what you're talking about, pack and chill, the last event was cancelled. Yeah, people have booked artists, booked the venue, advertised, put, put out communication for people to come. And it's social distancing in people's cars. That was also stopped by government. So give us an idea. What does government want us to do? Cars in Tani? Are we all going to go into the streets and trenches and, you know, and cut grass? And They don't even pay people for you that. Understand? We can't all do mm. that. Yeah. It's not even what we like to do anyway. For us, we know what we like to do. We know what we are good at. Yes. And that's what we were doing before we were disrupted. So that's a problem. So the government needs to stop, you know. And it, it's very easy for government to say they'll be locked down, they'll be locked down, because the civil servants are still earning their salaries. The head of state has not been impacted by a lockdown. Uhuru Kenyatta, have you been impacted? I'm a Mshara Sinile Ile. Sasa Sisi. Do you understand? MPs. MPs are still earning. Governors are still earning. Senators are still earning. MCAs MCAs are earning. Women reps are earning. What does a women rep do again? 
That's another story for another day. We don't know. You understand? Like all these guys are earning, but young guys. And the reason why COVID-19, if you look at the numbers, what has killed more people? Is it HIV AIDS? Is it cancer? Is it malaria? Is it road accidents? Or is it COVID-19? We saw the data. We saw the data. It was on the newspaper. Thank you so much, the journalists who put that infographic there. In standard. Yeah, standard media group. 2,000 people about who have died from COVID, right? The, the other cases of cancer, they the 20,000 annually. So why haven't we locked down our country for cancer or HIV AIDS or, or malaria or road accidents or diarrhea? Or diarrhea? We're just killing guys. Kuhara in our In our kuliko COVID. Kuhara in our bwana. Hashtag. Hashtag kuhara in our unlock our country. Why aren't we stopping every food outlet there, there, what, what, you because of Kuhara? You know, we're not we're thinking. Not allow me to say this and allow me to be insensitive a little bit. The reason why the government is so concerned of COVID-19 is because it's killing them. It's killing government officials. Politicians. Politicians. Mm. Not us. Nani umesikia mekufa COVID kayole? Ama me madhara ya ama uruma, ama kibira, line saba hapa. Nani? Umesikia? Ni wale watu wanakufa ni wale watu waze na wadosi. Aki mungu wa mesaidia umasikini. Data wakufi jo hiki tu. Blood is on our Even the bill, the bill, Bana. Do you, do you know that? In, I, I said this in the earlier speech. The hospitals, the bills are so crazy. First, ICU, the worst, followed by HDU. Oh my God. If you've ever had a, a relative or a friend who's been hospitalized, I know you understand what the bill is. And then insurance doesn't cover. NHF wakuna kitu. Kwa NHF wana kwambia ati, kama uli hata payment moja, your card is invalid. And then Mwangalie, Kama Meko Kilipa, you and HF. When the two seven yard, Nakoa Leo, Nipime City Scan, Yakifua, Niangalia Kama Nikona Kanimoni, Yamaka Nikofiti. Utambiwa Kadi Fani, Bill twelve K. Twelve K now Jakuan Amshara. I was put a lazy way million in Moja, Utado Abbey. Unless when him wheezy, I'm a politician, I'm a Unafana Kazi Serekali, I'm Unafana Wash Wash. <laughs> and who has a million shillings hanging around, like ready to spend happily for the next one year? It is bad that a country, a country with a lot of productive people, educated people, so much people bubbling with potential, that we are talking about the richest people are politicians, people who derive their money from our taxes. There is no real creation of wealth and opportunities. And that's, what, that's the message, that's a clarion call we want you to take home. And we want you to take to Kenyans that we want to work. We don't want handouts. We don't want all these artificial barriers created by the bureaucrats in their staffy uh, offices uh, in, in Harambe House or all those other places. They sit down there and just come up with any crazy idea that w just to stifle our creativity and our productivity. Okay? That's the message we want to, 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 to take out. And I think uh, we have. Yeah. Yeah.